Hey y'all, good morning. I want to uh, bring y'all something that I've been looking into for about a month now. About a month ago, this mother had uh, emailed me and asked me what I look into her daughter's death. Um, to the mother, I have not forgot about you or your daughter. I have prayed on this. I have had to wait on this. And now... I have been told to move on this. So don't think I left you hanging, Ma. I got you. I'm bringing the face of Keisha White out right now. And we're going to get this thing out to the people today so we can get you the help that you need. Okay, so the mom, you know... Send me a few pictures. She sent me, you know, a lot of emails explaining the situation and everything. I am going to uh, start reaching out to this mother, you know, um, on a regular basis as we get this situation resolved, you know. Um, now, here's a little part of the email that she sent me. Thank you so much for allowing me to tell you my daughter's story. Her name is Keisha White. She was 26 years old when she died Saturday, May 10, 2014, the day before Mother's Day. She had been in the hospital for three weeks due to lupus complications and her kidneys were failing. However, the doctors told me right up until the morning she died that they expected her condition to improve and that they did not need to that I did not need to prepare myself for her death. Her cause of death was anoxic brain injuries. Now, she goes on to explain how uh, her daughter died in restraints, which I will show you uh, later on because it's, you know, further down and some other things we're going to talk about. Uh, right now, what I want to um, bring to attention, first and foremost, is the nurse. Okay. So... Let's go down um, where I left off is where she talks about uh, her daughter uh, died in restraints from lack of oxygen. And she was saying that, you know, they had like the oxygen tubes in her nose, but they didn't even have the oxygen on this young lady. OK, so I want to get down to according to let me show you all where I am. I'm right here. Hold on. What's going on here? I'm down here. Right there. According to a DHHS report, the nurse verbally refused to co-workers that she would not reconnect those leads despite several notifications from the technician that was monitoring the machine's readings. She said she would not reconnect them because she had done so four times already. The board of nursing informed me that after I left my daughter's room that night, there's someone and the mother feels like it's the nurse, went into Keisha's room and silenced the monitor. Now, the monitor was already silenced in the room, okay? That's why she did not know there was a problem with the lease. It was not sounding. But when it was silenced again after I left the room, after I left, it was to keep the monitor from sounding and sending notification to the technician. And there was a purposeful act. Yes, it was. Now, my thing is, okay, first of all, if you're in a hospital, if there's a malfunction in the machine and they silence it or whatever, and you have people in there, you know, the physician, nurse or whatever would, you know, like, well, we're finna, you know, swap the machines out, blah, 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 you know, inform of it, inform us if something changed or something like that of that nature. Now, there's no reason for a nurse to come in and silence a machine because the machine is making a lot of noise and being annoying. I mean, that's your job to come in and monitor and check these machines because these machines are sounding for a reason. You get what I'm saying? So, I felt like 
when she first silenced the machine inside the room and the mother couldn't hear if it beeped or anything how would that mother be able to go out and you know grab a nurse or something if she don't know what the machine is reading and and it's not making any sounds so she's not hearing the alerts and so if the nurse come back in a second time and tamper with the machine so that the technicians, you know, they'd be sitting in the office reading all the patients, you know, vitals and watching their machines and stuff. If the technician isn't getting any notifications, I see two problems with that. Now, it says here. Um Okay, I'm going back according to a DHHS report. The nurse verbally refused the co-workers that she would not reconnect those leads. Okay? Despite several notifications from the technician. Okay. So, here's my thing. This is where I say I have two problems. One, I have a problem with the nurse. And two, yes, I have a problem with the technician. Because, first and foremost, if the technician is notifying the nurse on staff about the problems occurring in this room due to a machine, it is the nurse to go in there and see what is going on and report back to the technician. If the technician is constantly informing the nurse that, you know, is something not right, you know, you need to go check. And this nurse purposely refused to not serve this certain patient in this room, then it should have been somebody called in on this nurse. That's where I feel like the technician should have stepped up. Now, when this technician stopped getting any responses from this room's machine, then I felt like it was up to the technician to call in that something is not going right here. Because everybody has somebody that they has to look up to until you get to the head of the corporation. And then even the head of a corporation probably has some silent partners that they have to consult with. So you know what I'm saying? So everybody, and we're going to use my favorite word, the authorities, everybody have a higher authority. So I feel like the technician and the nurse are accountable right here. Now, when I got up a few days ago, I think this is what really lit fire under me. It's because the first video that was recommended to me uh, was a crime wash daily of the nurses that was of a nurse that was killing the patients basically for fun, you know, and she was going in the room and she was uh, giving massive doses of a particular medicine. Uh, can't recall the name to the patients uh, via IV and uh, she you know basically started bragging to the other co-workers that she was doing such things so you know they basically went back and uh, accumulated documents of you know some recent deaths and everything and found that it was the same drug and dosage so have you in several patients you know and it caught up with her so we need to look deeper into this situation with Keisha White. Now, I just want to, you know, bring this to my channel so that, you know, my subbies will know what else that I'm doing. And um, I'm just going to break this out into little parts and, you know, some segments to explain what's going on i'm gonna um reach back out to the mother and talk to her a little bit more because i don't want to 
First and foremost, I don't want to move without the Most High instructing me to move. Secondly, I don't want to move without the Mother's approval of when and how I move. You know what I'm saying? So, I just want, you know, you all, you can, you know, pull up this case and stuff and stuff like that or whatever. And, you know, email me at moneystackstvgmail.com. But most of all, I want you to, oh, before I let you go, let me show you something. So, you know, like I had seen the crime watch daily and then I was like, you know, let me, I want to go and, you know, look at other cases and stuff because I'm thinking like, you know, could Keisha be one amongst many? at this particular hospital with this particular nurse you know so it really just had me thinking and i just feel like this mother is rolling on four years come may 10th of you know the death of her daughter not being resolved and she hasn't really got any justice for it so we're gonna say a prayer in silence for this mother. So let's just take a little moment of silence for Keisha White. So thank y'all for watching this video. Please get in the comments. Please feel free to email me and stay tuned for the next one.